Hello, keyboard people using Akai Advanced 61 with VIP. Took me a while to figure out how this stuff works, but I'm going to show you VIP. Uh, just some of the basics so you're not so confused by what you're seeing. This is the main screen of VIP. On the left, you have a search box. You have a list of every sound that's in your database. And that's from every plugin that you have. And then all of those sounds, and you could scroll through these indefinitely. Well, not indefinitely, until you get to 4693. This is how you choose individual sounds. Since there are so many sounds, it helps to be able to dial it down to just the plugin you want, or the instrument type, or the timbre, or the style or articulation of the instrument. Let's go to this, and we're going to sort by name. Now, this is preference. You can sort however you want. And let's say I want to find a piano. So I'll come up here, and I'll search for piano. And look, what happens is VIP takes the search term piano, and it filters out everything in the list that has the word piano in it, and it also adjusts all of the tags. These tags tell you what category each sound falls in. So Grand Piano A Complete, let's do, yeah, Grand Piano A Complete. If I click on it, it loads. And in the right-hand side, you see that Grand Piano A Complete is part of 88.2. You know that because of the check mark. If you come over here to Instrument, the check mark next to Piano is checked. That just tells you that it's a piano sound. In the timbre, nothing's checked. And nothing is checked in articulation or style. So the only tags that we see for this sound is piano. And how tags work is simple. If you want to find all piano sounds very quickly, all you need to do is go to the tag piano and click it. There are 254 sounds out of those 4,600 that have piano tagged on it. And that gives me a quick way to dial down to just piano sounds. If I click percussion without clicking piano, it's going to be looking at both. These are toggle switches, so it's either on or off. Right? Piano is on or it's off. Right? So let's say we wanted to look at all of the 88.2 sounds. There's 107. Click on 88.2. This list sorts uh, the way you've sorted it up here by name, but it only pulls up the 88.2 sounds. Now, inside of 88.2, they're categorized and they're tagged in certain ways. So there's 103 are pianos. Well, naturally, because 88.2 is a piano plugin. So there's 103 that are tagged as piano, but only 16 have been tagged with bass. So if I wanted to address only 88.2, then I want to pick out only the ones that have bass attached to it, I would click on bass. So now these two toggles being on cause this list to reduce down to 16. So now I have those to choose from. Okay. So this is, that is simply uh, uh, the easiest way to dial down to what you want. You want a punchy sound? Out of all your 4,600 sounds, click on punchy. You've got 1,749 to choose from. Now you want those to be bass? Click on bass. It drops you down to 477 total. You want it to be an arpeggiator? Click on arpeggiato, uh, arpeggios. Now we've only got 31 options that are bass, punchy, arpeggios. Turn that back off and we can go jump to chords. There's only seven options that are bass, punchy with chords. Okay, hopefully you're following along with how this toggles on and off. Now, if you click on, say, Filthy, it's going to load and it's going to show you that Filthy is part of Vacuum Pro, but it's also been tagged as Soft, Warm, Ambient, Chords, Classic, Dance, Electronic, Hip Hop, House, and that looks like about... It. Oh, and clean and airy. Basically, this means that 
if we click on clean, filthy will remain in that list because it's tagged with clean. If we click on hip hop, look, it's still there. It's still part of the list because that's where the tags are. If I determine that filthy needs a new tag and we want to add a tag to it, you can simply click the tag and now not only will it be clean hip hop house pads, but now I'm considering it orchestral. This allows me to customize how the instruments are tagged. Of course, I don't want to do that because it's not orchestral, but that just gives you an idea how you can organize. Okay, so we've got a sound. Let me, let me go to 88. I'll uncheck these. So now I'm reset. I'm addressing all of my sounds. Click on 88.2 and I'll just pick a, a grand piano A complete. Okay, once this is loaded, I'm able to now adjust the parameters of that sound. And that this controls um, through bank A, B, C, and D. D doesn't have anything on this sound. But it has all of these different parameters and these are mapped to your keyboard's knobs. Or I can just use the mouse to, to adjust those parameters here. But that will change the sound on the fly and, uh, and help you customize it the way you need it to be. And then you can save that instance uh, and it will be permanent. Uh, another thing to note here is you've got this um, keyboard panel and this is a, basically a map of the front of the keyboard. You have your, your wheels, your keyboard, you've got all your pads um, and the notes that they fire and then you have a keyboard you can test so you can hear what it sounds like without having to have the keyboard in front of you. I'm assuming you're connected to the keyboard. Okay, the next little icon over here is the open close multi-panel. Because we've selected one sound, there's always going to be one sound in the first channel here. And this has eight options. You can put up to eight sounds layered, layered in many different configurations. Right now, all we have is the piano, but if we wanted to add another sound, such as, let's say, something that's a choir or an airy sound, what we can do is click on this next channel, this next layered channel, and I can go back and I can uncheck piano, uncheck 8088, and maybe I want to just find something that's airy, and that pulls up one of 932 sounds and let's do airy and maybe atmospheric. Now we're down to 362. Only one pluck. Only one trill. Okay. Uh, let's say it wants to be strings. So now we have fairy tale pad. Let's pick that. Because I've clicked on this and had this second channel selected, VIP automatically puts that into the second channel. So now when I play the keyboard, I have both sounds. Right? And so on and so forth. So I can continue to add and continue to add. At this point, what I've done is I've created a layered sound, a layered patch um, that I can save as a multi. So this setup here becomes a multi and it does so when I click this box right here. The first time I click it, it saves the multi. It's a brand new multi. Once I've saved it, I have to right click it to save as a new sound. So this could be a template. You could create a template with a piano and a pad and then add in uh, other sounds and then perhaps save as and then continue to save as and create new sounds over and over again. So what I'll do is I'll hit save and you'll notice right here, it prompts you to name the sound. So we'll name this fairy tale piano. Now I would probably name this after the song that it's designed to play, um, or if there's a generic set or a generic sound or generic multi that you want to create for, you know, perhaps you have um, an organ and a piano you know, in most of the songs you play, and you don't want a multi that's specifically for one song. Just create a multi that works for you and then use it across multiple songs. So fairy tale piano, that's saved. Now on your screen on the on the keyboard, you're gonna see this at the top, and you're also gonna see uh, all these sounds uh, in the multi when you press the multi button. So that's the basics of setting up a multi and saving it. Um, once you do that, you can create a set list for the gig that you're doing.
and uh, we can say copy shop gig Monday if I could only spell correctly rename Monday right and now our multis um, if we clear out our instruments we want to clear this out and we're gonna we're gonna click on multis so we're only showing the ones that we've created fairy tale piano is in our multis now so if I go back to set list I can drag make sure I'm on the set I want I can drag this and this is the first song in my set um, and I can uh, dial through that on the screen of the VIP uh, or the Akai Advanced 61 very simply and select it on the fly I can also use Ableton Live to trigger program change which will move um, move through the set list um, on an automated basis or using a uh, foot pedal or trigger or uh, a launch pad trigger or any trigger basically and this uh, is now anything that you, anything that you do to this multi um, all of the instrument settings the effects um, all of these settings here when you save this multi uh, will be saved with the set list and so it's pretty efficient and yeah so uh, if you have any questions leave them in the in the comments but uh, this was my uh, kind of discovery time for for VIP and figuring out how how this actually works how to navigate it how to not get lost you know how to clear out things and reset them so I know what I'm doing instruments plugins set lists you know learning how to navigate these menus <clears throat> so just play around with it remember that these toggle if you have got one of these on and you can't figure out why your sounds aren't showing up you only got a hundred sounds it's because something over here is tagged and toggled and filtered out so brass 166 sounds well where are the rest of my sounds well uncheck that and you're gonna have all these sounds and that's basically how you navigate VIP alright thanks for watching